Spare a thought for the poor builder and the team grafting away in this humble office, lit by two tired old fluorescent battens. It's not glamorous, but it's where the deals get done. And we all know builders can be careful with money, especially here in Yorkshire. So today's question is a simple one. Is it worth swapping out these fittings to save energy? That all comes down to two things. Do the energy savings actually add up? But can we get this job done fast enough to make a profit? Luckily, we have the Robus Speed Beam Express, and express been the key word. So let's crack on. First up, let's find out how much energy these old fittings are really using. We could just look at the lamp wattage. Those tubes say 70 watts, but that's only part of the story. What they don't tell you is the extra load from the control gear, which quietly bumps up the total draw. To get the full picture, I'm using a home energy monitor and clamping in at the switch. Let's see what it's pulling. 170 watts total, so about 85 watts per fitting. That's a fair bit more than expected, and definitely more than what's printed on the side of the tube. This suggests the fittings are running on magnetic ballasts, so someone went cheap the first time around, and has been paying for it ever since. While we're here, I'll double check the fixture length using the trusty measure app. Just shy of 1800 millimeters, a six footer in old money, and what about light levels? Quick check on the boss's desk, 300 lux. That's on the low side for an office. Ideally, we should be pushing 500 lux or more especially if you're squinting at fine detail on tender drawings and if you're on a bigger job and you want the light levels checking you could always use the robust lighting design on the my robust app right time to head to the distribution board and isolate the circuit once that's safely done it's game on let's get these old fittings out and the new ones in the speedbeam express really lives up to its name when it comes to install time Here's what makes it fast. The quick release end caps make access a breeze, no fiddling with awkward screws. Inside, both the base and LED module are held securely with restraining straps, so you're not juggling parts on a ladder. There's plenty of room for cable entry and fixing and a movable wiring harness. Handy, the last spark didn't leave you any slack in the supply cables. Wiring's a doddle too, thanks to screwless terminals that support loop-in, loop-out setups straight from the box. And here's a little time-saving tip. We drilled our own mounting holes to match the existing fixings. That meant no measuring, no patching, just straight in and on with the job. More time-saving tips. The cable entries line up with what you'll typically find on existing fluorescent fittings, and you can even use the fixture box as a mounting template. While we're in here, there are a couple of extra features worth highlighting. You can easily add a microwave occupancy sensor, a great way to drive energy use down even further. After all, the most efficient lights are the ones that aren't on, and this makes sure no one forgets to turn them off at the end of the day. Of course, the microwave sensor is a bit more intelligent, it won't just plunge you into darkness. It can be set to dim the lights to a lower level first, which is especially useful in areas like corridors or shared spaces where a full shut off might be a bit too abrupt. And if you need emergency lighting, this fitting has one of the simplest conversion kits we've seen. No rewiring no faff it just plugs straight into the base quick clean and compliant speaking of compliance the emergency pack helps there too it includes a dual test option manual and a self-test mode that means it will automatically carry out monthly and annual function tests so all you need to do is keep an eye on the status leds for any faults more money saved no need for test key switches or manual checks both fixtures were installed in about half an hour, quick enough that the labour cost doesn't wipe out the energy savings. Now, there's just one final decision to make before powering up. This fitting lets you choose from three colour temperatures, warm white, neutral white and cool white. We've gone for neutral white to match what was already in the space. There's also a power setting selector, either 34 watts or 68 watts. Budgets are tight here and we didn't have time to build a full lighting design, so we're following our go-to rule of thumb. You get the same light output for half the power when replacing fluorescence with LED so we're locking it in at 34 watts right let's power up and see the results measuring the power draw now and we're down to a measly 63 watts total that's less than half of what we started with but of course it's not just about power what about the light levels we're now reading around 450 lux at the desk that's a 50% increase in light output for half the energy not bad at all we could increase the light even more by selecting the higher power setting but let's be honest if the builder gets wind of that he'll probably want to remove one of the fittings to save a few quid over the course of a year assuming around 1000 hours of use that works out to a saving of about 110 kilowatt hours at 25 pence per kilowatt hour that's roughly 26 pounds a year saved so give it a few years and let the savings add up that should cover the cost of the fitting and my time and at this rate looks like the builder's going to need another safe for all those 20 pound notes not bad for half an hour's work and a couple of screws and the supply room in this handy little pouch 
want to know what you could save plug in your own numbers and see i've left a link in the description so you can check out the full range of lengths and power options available keep a few of these on the van and you'll be ready for any rapid reaction energy saving job charging around town like an energy saving hero and if you like the express features but need something with a bit more muscle and a higher ip rating check out our install of the robus harbour express we fitted that one down on the farm and it didn't flinch now of course you might want to slow down the flow of cash into the builder's wallet and insist that the proper paperwork is followed that means issuing a minor works certificate in the video on screen now i'll show you another site time saver this one for testing and certification it could save you just as much time as the install itself